What gift of grace is Jesus my Redeemer? There is no more for heaven now to give. He is my joy, my righteousness and freedom. My steadfast love, my deep and boundless peace. To this I hold, my hope is only Jesus. For my life is wholly bound to His. Oh, how strange and divine I can sing. All is mine, yet not I. But through Christ in me. The night is dark, but I am not forsaken. For by my side, the Savior, He will stay. I labor. Show! 
Happy New Year, friends. Thank you so much for joining us today, uh, the first Sunday of 2021. Lord Jesus, make this a better year than the one before. Amen. Hey, I, uh, I really am grateful for you uh, giving us a chance to worship together with you. This morning, we're just kind of taking a little look at um, where we're headed and, and what it is that we are about as a church. So um, uh, sit back and uh, put your, uh, your thinking cap on and, and give God some space this morning just to kind of paint that picture again and hopefully draw us in a little deeper into why we are here. And that reminds me of this, this notion that's um, pretty cool to me. You are not here by accident this morning. And even though you made the choice to tune in, God has something for you this morning. So I pray that God would uh, open our ears and our eyes to, to see and hear uh, his love for us and also his, uh, his hopes and dreams for us. Pray with me. God, thank you for being in our midst. We continue to ask you to be born anew in us that we might look more and more like Jesus. Meet with us this morning. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Let the King of my heart be the mountain where I run, the fountain I drink from, oh, he is my song. Let the King of my heart be the shadow where I hide, the ransom for my life, oh, he is my song. You are good. Good, oh, you are good, good, oh. Let the king of my heart be the wind inside my sails, the anchor in the wings, oh, he is my star. Let the king.
grander earth has quaked before. Moved by the sound of his voice. Seas that are shaken and stirred can be calmed and broken from my regard. Through it all, through it all, my eyes are on you. Through it all, through it all, it is well. Through it all, through it all, my eyes are on you. And it is well with me. for me to not believe even when my eyes can't see and this mountain that's in front of me will be thrown into the midst of the sea through it all Hey, I suspect that uh, most of us have at one time or another felt like we were on the outside looking in. I remember my senior year of high school. It was one of the last few days of the school year, and they handed out our yearbooks. And, uh, you know, we're all running around getting our friends to sign them. Inevitably, somebody 
opens it up and they sign it right where the two sides of the book come together and they write, I signed your crack. Yeah, that might have been me. But when you get a minute after you've kind of had everybody signing it and you're flipping through and real slow just kind of looking at the whole book and you're looking at your friends and seeing everybody in the, in the yearbook, but, but really deep down what you're keeping an eye out for is pictures of you, right? And you're just hoping that there's some really fun or really cool picture uh, of you in the, in the yearbook. Well, I was kind of flipping through, and I've, I've gotten all the way through. And in the back, you know, there's that little section with the ads in it, people that had sponsored the yearbook. And, and back there in the ads, there's this half-page picture of 25 kids. These were the kids that I called my friends. These were the kids that I hung out with. And the title of this picture, the, the, the heading on it is The Crew. And I wasn't in it. I wasn't included. I, I was on the outside looking in. I suspect we've all been there every now and then. Not quite feeling like you belong. Not feeling quite like you're really accepted. Wishing, though, that you were, right? Wishing you were a part of, um, of that, that group, that club, that team. Wishing you were a part of the crew. Maybe you've been there. Some people spend a lot of time <clears throat> in that place. <clears throat> I read about this, um, this teenage girl this past week, a girl who spent a lot of years really struggling with her sexual identity for years, trying to hide the truth about herself and, and trying desperately to be something that she, she wasn't because she knew if she told the truth, she would find herself on the outside looking in. And what we all really want, and, and I think really need, is, is a place to belong. And so we'll do all kinds of things to try to find that place where we belong. And, and so this girl eventually tells her parents. I mean, family, they say family's a place where when you really mess everything up, they still have to let you in the front door. Except this girl's family didn't. They turned her out. They cut her off. And there she was on the outside looking in. She didn't have a place to belong. Maybe you've been there. The last several years, uh, more and more people in our country have, have felt like the church has done that very same thing to them, uh, turned them out, cut them off in one way or another. For some, it's because they were literally told, you don't belong here. For some of them, it was simply the act of, of, of watching the things that people in the church said or did or the stands that they took uh, or, or behaviors that just looked so much like hate and hypocrisy. And, and so they saw all of that and they felt like the church had left them and they just realized they didn't belong there anymore. No place to, to belong. Maybe you've been there. It's a pretty common experience, probably a lot more common than we want to admit in our own lives or, or recognize in other people's lives. But I can't help compare that with the way that Jesus made people feel. Um, just the things that you see in the life of Jesus. There's this, uh, this experience, this core value, uh, this vibe um, that, that happens, that we see it again and again and again in, in the stories about Jesus in the Bible. And I think you can sum up all of these experiences with one sentence. The people who were on the outside looking in found a place to belong with Jesus. If there were one story like that in the Bible, I think that would be enough for us to say to each other, hey, that's great. Let's do that. Let's, let's do what Jesus did there. That, that would be enough, right? One story. But it turns out this is one of the most uh, recurring themes in the Bible, one of the most recurring experiences. Jesus sits down and he talks with people who um, you're supposed to avoid. He shares a glass of water with a woman who had a pretty sketchy sexual history. 
That's like a double no-no. He, he includes all the wrong kinds of people in his inner circle of, of disciples. He puts his hands on people that have a contagious disease to heal them. He invites himself over to dinner at Zacchaeus' house. Zacchaeus is this despised tax collector that nobody wanted anything to do with. Over and over again, Jesus sits down and eats with people who were excluded by religion and despised by popular culture. And, and, and what you see happening is that people who were on the outside looking in found a place to belong with Jesus. People who were not welcomed by religion were unconditionally welcomed by Jesus. People who didn't matter to the world were made to feel like they matter to Jesus. People who had been turned out cut off. They were simply loved and accepted by Jesus. This is one of my favorite um, accounts of that. This comes from Luke 15. Now the tax collectors and the sinners were all drawing near to hear Jesus. And the Pharisees and the scribes, those are the religious people, they grumbled saying, this man welcomes sinners and eats with them. Over and over again, this man welcomes sinners and eats with them. That's what they said about Jesus. So with this, this mountain of evidence, this recurring experience again and again, where, where we see who Jesus loved and how Jesus loved, what do you think we're here for? Somebody reminded me recently um, that C.S. Lewis says the goal of the Christian life is to become little Christs. If we're going to become little Christs, and that's what he did, what are we here for? I want to read this um, little scripture passage. Um, this is one of those sections in the Bible where it's pretty easy to just kind of skim over it and, and feel pretty good about it. It's, a, it's just nice verse. It sounds sweet. It's about love. But when you kind of dig into it and you listen to what it's really saying, this is stunning. This is radical. This is an earthquake kind of verse uh, if, we, if we hear it honestly. And this, this comes from 1 John back near the end of the Bible uh, in chapter 4. It's actually verses um, 7 through 21. It's these, what's that, 14 verses that are so, so good. And, and honestly, that whole section, this could, and maybe it should, be our theme passage for the year. And I would suspect that we're going to come back to it again and again. But this morning, just a, a couple of verses from the beginning and a couple at the end. Here's what John writes. Dear friends, let us love one another, for love comes from God. Everyone who loves has been born of God and knows God. Whoever does not love does not know God, because God is love. And then skipping down to verse 20. Whoever claims to love God and yet hates a brother or a sister is a liar. For whoever does not love their brother and sister whom they have seen cannot love God whom they have not seen. And he has given us this command, anyone who loves God must also love their brother and their sister. Friends, the ones on the outside looking in, the ones who are, who are, who are desperate for a place to belong, the ones wondering if they were, will ever really be accepted, they are our brother, and our sister. The ones we avoid, the ones that uh, make us a little bit nervous to be around them, the ones that we're a little bit tempted to kind of exclude, or at least we just don't think about them very much, they are our brothers and our sisters. And he has given us this command. Anyone who loves God must also love their brother and their sister. I've been thinking a lot about this notion of love in this, in this passage because love is a concept in our culture 
uh, and in our language that's really broad. And it's so broad to, that it's also kind of vague. I mean, you can love your spouse and you can also love a cheeseburger, right? You can love God and you can love that five minutes of quiet on the toilet in the morning. Love can embrace just about anything. So how do we make sense of love? How do we put some specificity to it here? And, and so if we think about it, if we think about love in the context of how Jesus lived, I really think it comes down to this. Love feels like belonging. When Jesus welcomed those tax collectors and sinners and ate with them, how do you think that made them feel? These people who were used to being excluded, who were always on the outside looking in, the ones who, who, who never were, were included or part of the group, N nobody really wanted them around. When Jesus welcomed them, they felt like somehow, some way, they belonged. That's what it feels like when you are loved Love feels like belonging. Here's why I think that matters. When Jesus, um, he, when he tells us to love our brothers and sisters, it's got almost nothing to do with how we feel about them. It's got nearly everything to do with how we make them feel. Love is, it's almost entirely about our actions and what they communicate to the other person how they are experienced by the one we're trying to love. You know, this is really true about a lot of things. Um, our intentions matter a lot less than our actual impact. You know, we might intend to be a really nice person. We might even think that we are a really nice, uh, really nice people. But if other people experience us, as a little aggressive or abrasive or, or maybe even mean, then the truth is that we're not actually that nice. It's not so much about intention as it is impact. The impact of Jesus welcoming those tax collectors and those sinners, the impact of that was that they felt like they, they belonged. I think if our love doesn't lead to that, it's probably something a little bit less than love. And he has given us his command. Love your brothers and your sisters. Well, that's where we're, uh, that's where we're headed this year. That's what I hope uh, the, the tone for this year will be. It's what I, I, I hope our our kind of direction will be now and, and going forward into the future. I hope it's the theme we embrace. Let's be a family that, that doesn't just enjoy the love of Jesus, even though we're going to do that too, but that shares and shows the love of Jesus in a way that feels to others like they belong. Like Jesus, let's be a church where outsiders are welcomed and included uh, where, where teenage girls who are struggling find a safe place to be themselves and to truly belong. Let's be a church where the ones on the outside are welcomed in. Let's be a community that, that loves like crazy because God first loved us. Let's be a, a church family that's known for how we love because God is love. And there's no more authentic way to, to become a little Christ, to live like Jesus, than to love this way. Let's celebrate love everywhere we find it. Because as John said, whoever loves knows God. Let's love like crazy, if for no other reason than because there are a whole bunch of people out there and, and there are probably people in here who are desperately looking for a place to belong. Let's love them until they feel that way. If that's you, if you're one of those looking for a place to belong, if you feel like you're on the outside looking in, would you reach out? 
just shoot me a little message saying, hey, I, I'm looking for a place to belong, and I will walk alongside you until you find it. If you have ideas, friends, a church family, if you have ideas about how to be a church that does this better, how to be a more loving and, 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 and belonging kind of church, let me know. Let's do this together. I can't do it. We can. Pray with me. God, thank you for welcoming us unconditionally. Thank you that we belong to you now and forever. Thank you for your calling on our lives to love. May our love feel like belonging to those on the outside looking in. May there be nobody on the outside looking in 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 our family or outside our doors. Help us to become a church that loves like Jesus did. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Hey, listen. Let's uh, here in this new year, the first Sunday of 2021, let's start a new habit. Would you do this with me, please? Let's make it a habit to, um, well, not, well, to love, for one thing, to love our brothers and sisters everywhere we find them. But, but here's actually what I, I have in mind. Would you make it a habit to start checking in with me on Sundays after church? And it doesn't have to be me, any of the staff, but I would love to just know what you thought when you heard these words. I, I want to hear, what's your takeaway? from this. As you read the scripture passage and wrestle with this idea, what's the, what's the action item that you're feeling called to do? What's your response? Or what kind of questions does it raise for you? I would love nothing more than to get 200 emails in the next uh, 24 hours. Of, of just, I just want to hear. What do you think? What's God doing in our midst? Because I think when we see and hear from, from each other like that, we'll start to see something that God's up to. So would you do that for me today? Shoot me a quick email, text me something on Facebook, whatever works for you. What'd you think? Thanks. Let's, uh, let's sing one more song before we wrap it up.
Hey friends, thanks again for uh, joining us this morning. Uh, remember that we're going to be online for uh, at least the next couple of weeks. Our, uh, our session, our Board of Elders will be meeting here in, uh, well, next week to kind of look at where things are and, and see uh, where we feel uh, like God's, what he's leading us to do next. And so stay tuned for that. In the meantime, keep joining us right here on the Church Online platform. And starting next week, all of our kids' uh, Sunday morning stuff will be online again as well. So uh, kids, thank you. If you've been able to tune in, that's pretty awesome. Uh, and looking forward to um, hearing from Miss Mel again next week because, let's be honest, she's better than me. But uh, again, friends, thank you so much. I hope and pray that your new year is filled with love because God is love. Go and love like Jesus. In his name, amen. See you soon.